So I'm Brian Gallagher. I'm the CEO of United Way Worldwide, a um, non-government organization headquartered in Washington, D.C., with uh, 1,800 locations in 41 countries around the world. Uh, just like L'Oreal was described this morning, we're centralized in terms of our strategy and consistent in our governance, but we're uh, local in our operation, and you'll hear that from Brazil and from India and from Ghana today. This is, uh, this is your human and your people-centered interlude today, this panel, uh, your break from politics and economics. Um, and in fact, uh, without being facetious, one of the things that I'll suggest is that part of the solution going forward to a lot of the issues we've been talking about all day is to uh, formally put people in the center of the problem to be solved. Um, Immigration is about people. Um, economic success is about people. Um, you know, I've worked my whole life, I'll introduce our, our panelists here in a second, I've worked my whole life working with corporations, for-profit corporations, and human service nonprofits in communities all over the world to try to put those two things together. And um, the best thing a person can have is a livelihood. Um, but the marketplace doesn't always work for everybody in every instance, so it's the need to put those things together. There's no long-term economic success without human success. Uh, it's, just not, it's just not possible. We're going to, um, and the last thing I would say as we get into this conversation, just to put it back into a economic and political frame, if that's easier for us to think about it, and I would say even maybe provocative for us to think about it this way, is think about human beings as infrastructure. You know, we talk a lot about inputs into the marketplace. We talk about the, the digital revolution. We talk about knowledge-based economies. And yet we don't seem to talk a lot about people as inputs, um, their success. So we're gonna talk a bit about what is the measure of success uh, in, the, in our current environment. We've touched a bit on a few of these things, but I would say for our conversation, four very disrupted, disruptive trends, globalization of the economy, digital technology evolution. We just talked about the migration of people. There are more people living outside their country of birth today in the world than any time in the history of the world. And demographic shift. As an American citizen, actually American and Irish citizen, I would, um, suggest one of the things we don't talk a lot about in the U.S. that's causing most of the political turmoil is that economically we've lost economic mobility in the country. So if you're born into poverty, you're much more likely to stay there in the United States than you would have been historically, like my father. Um, and the second is we're fast becoming a non-white majority country. And even though we don't talk about it a lot, that's freaking a lot of people out. Um, so we've lost mobility, the white majority, especially working class, um, without a college education, not doing as well economically, and we're becoming less white. And it's, uh, it's, it's caused a great deal of tension. It doesn't have to, but it has. Um, so we're going to get into how to get young people ready for this new reality, this new economic reality, uh, and we're going to start where uh, you get the most return on your investment in the development of young people, and that's at the very beginning. Uh, the more you invest in a young person early, if it's a positive input, the more positive return. If it's a negative input, the more negative the return. We've got three folks to help us do that today. First, um, to my far left is uh, Dr. Juliet Tuakli. Uh, Juliet is the CEO, Chief Medical Officer for Child Accra in Ghana. Uh, she is a medical doctor, a long-time professional uh, health uh, leader and administrator, and she's on the United Way Worldwide uh, Board of Trustees. Next to Juliet is Eduardo de Campos Quiros. Uh, he has just recently left as the CEO of the Maria Cecilia Suto Vigigal Foundation in Sao Paulo, Brazil. He had a, oh, I'm sorry, I went, I went, went, to my immediate left is Eduardo. Eduardo has got a career in banking and then early childhood education and private foundation uh, in Brazil. And in the center is Chitaranjan Kaul, 
from, uh, from Pune, India. Uh, he runs a center for learning resources in Pune, uh, deeply interested in not just early childhood education, but, uh, but learning and learning styles and systems generally. Let me just um, share a couple of statistics and, and thoughts, and then we'll get right into our discussion. Um, 85 to 90 percent of our brains are developed in the first three years of life. So every child born in the world is going to develop their brain most, most substantially within the few, first few years of life. And if you think of one of the things that develop as your brains develop is personality. So if we'd like to uh, make a positive intervention early in a child's life seems to be the time to do it. Um, as we get ready, we'll also explore the idea of uh, hard skills and soft skills. I once listened at a, at a panel in East Asia, the, the Minister of Education from Korea lament to the audience that they were training too many engineers in India, or in, in Korea. They have too many engineers. And they weren't teaching people soft skills, collaborative skills, um, creativity, and so forth. So we're going to touch on both of those. Um, we're going to talk about the need to upskill. Um, you know, we've all seen the reports, whether it's the World Economic Forum's uh, estimate that in the next four years, 75 million jobs will be lost worldwide to automation and to machine learning. Whether that's right or not right, whether you see it as a pro or a con, clearly machine learning and artificial intelligence is something that we have to deal with. Um, last two, the risk of losing an entire generation. Um, according to the OECD, Right now, 13.5% of all young people in the world, 15 to 29 years of age, are neither in school or have a job. If you look inside the United States specifically, there are 5 million young people in the United States who are not in school and do not have a job. Uh, we run the risk of losing an entire generation of young people. And finally, one of the things that we'll explore a great deal on the panel is the need to do this together that I forget who it was in the last panel is that uh, made the point that our generation I think is faced with having to create brand new systems, economic systems, healthcare systems, education systems, because our systems were built for a different economy, a different time. And we're, we, so the idea of governments and nonprofits and businesses working together to create collective systems I think is what's in front of us.